a scary mountain of a man that gives you the creeps. And when he walks into a room, you stand at attention and do whatever the hell he says. Period. <laughs> Mr. Mueller, first of all, is a very imposing man. He's quite tall. He's much taller than I am, almost double my height. At least it seems like that sometimes. And, um, well, it goes without saying that he's brilliant. His brain probably has more storage capacity than all of the computers he could possibly put together. They were talking about a person that's memorized every single detail of every single score probably ever written in the standard repertoire and a lot more. In addition to everybody's parts, which he has personally edited down to the most minute detail, in addition, he knows at least what seems like 20 languages, including languages of the pygmies, which haven't been spoken probably for the last two or three hundred years. He'll tell you about their verbs if you want to know. He's a pretty brilliant man. I think, you know, he certainly, um, for the great German classics, the Austro-German repertoire, uh, I think he's extremely knowledgeable. This is part of his, um, you know, background. It's, it's the sort of earth from which he arose out of, so he knows it intimately. He's a very nice, warm, generous person. Mr. Mueller is a little bit like a dinosaur in that he has huge, sharp teeth that he uses to rip and tear the meat that he eats. I would say that Mueller is a man of infinite wisdom. He's really large. He's a very large guy. Like, uh, I, I, I remember watching the monitors backstage for Cozy, and it was just like, there's Mueller, you know? Like, he's huge. He's, he's ginormous. There's no avoiding him. You know? Well, he's, he scares me. Sweet, but kind of scary. Craggy, uncompromising. His standards are such at auditions that it's very possible that quite a number of conductors of major orchestras would not be accepted into Curtis. Certainly very set in his ways and uh, a brilliant guy uh, who knows what he wants out of the orchestra and uh, is very accomplished at getting it. He takes his area of study very seriously. Mr. Mueller is a very serious musician, very um, very impassioned and highly educated. I don't even, I have no idea who he is. When, when I first started coming to the rehearsals 20 years ago, when he and I were new here, uh, I learned a great deal about music in general. Uh, this was on not just conducting and, uh, and obvious, you know, louder, softer, slower, you know, this kind of business, or when he was working with his own students. Um, in the lab class, uh, it was it was about music. I've just learned never to be unmusical because, or never to pretend to be unmusical, as it were. I learned that um, I learned that one is down. Um, I learned about the rite of spring a lot. I learned that the phrase ends here. He taught me how to play softly, um, more softly than I'll ever have to play, probably. Well, we always seem to manage to get comments about being angels of death as trombone players, whatever that means. I always thought we were nice, but, you know, I guess we just sound bad all the time or something. Oh. So. Play softer. And, uh... <laughs> Well, one time he told me to put on my ballet slippers. That was pretty good. Well, there was great instance. I remembered uh, we played Brahms one for the first time, and this was when his his wife had just passed away, and we were all surprised that he had come back so energetic and and strong, and I think. You know, the music really helped him, and I remembered uh, as the last movement came on, just being so inspired, like by by this man who had lost so much, but at the same time, you know, he was still conducting, he was just making music, and 
For me, that was one of the highlights of my time here at Curtis. Last time, last lap, when I brought in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and I by accidentently said that um, there were two ways to do an accelerando into the uh, trio section of the, of the scherzo movement. So I said, um, well, all right, we're going to try this. Um, there, there, there are really um, two ways of doing this, but we're going to do it a certain way. And as soon as I said that, Mueller said, no, there is only one way to do this, and all other ways are wrong. If you do it another way, it is committing perjury in a court of law. Of course, well, what do I, what do I say to that? Lab orchestra auditions, I can't remember which year it was of mine, but um, one of the conducting applicants was conducting the last movement of Brahms one, and he gets to the end of the real famous trombone chorale in the beginning of the first movement, and the trombones have a fermata. So we're sitting there playing the chord on the fermata, and he never cuts us off, and we just kept playing the fermata into the allegro, and didn't stop playing, and he's looking at us like, why are you still playing? And Mueller just gave us the thumbs up for it for doing exactly what the conductor asked us to do, which was nothing. We were doing uh, Bruckner for last year, and the opening's all, it's very soft, and he said, you don't actually start playing, but the earth begins to vibrate in E-flat. The thing that's really been enforced is watch the conductor. I mean, it's real simple. If you don't watch, he'll nail you for sure. <laughs> cool. What do you have there, a Playboy on your stand? Look up. I was walking down the, the hallway, and he was sitting outside the dean's office. And um, I tried to just kind of smile and nod and keep going. But he grabs my arm, looks at me, and says, Rhythm, the most important thing. And then that was it. I actually remember um, once after a piano seminar I worked And I heard this bassoon solo. It was very memorable. When he yelled at me in my first year and told me if I couldn't control my giggles, I should go back to kindergarten. I think he's basically pretty happy with the bass section most often. He often mentions the bass is scratching. Scratching all the time. And uh, it makes me want to... Uh, want to really make a beautiful sound and it also makes me a little angry. Forte only. Mm. Beethoven was a better musician than all of us in this room combined so if you don't understand what he wanted just do it out of respect for your profession. Don't encourage the brasses. Piano. Oh she's playing a beautiful solo and you sound like you are cleaning the toilet. Fine! McDonald's, Union, Paycheck, Cheeseburger, Salesman on the New Jersey, Turnpike, Camden Philharmonic, Supermarket, United States Post Office, Paycheck. <laughs> oh, are you the founding member of the Anti-Dolce Society? You must be the new president. This is the land of the free, not the land of noise. Piano. Mm. Brahms was born in the Himmola Hospital. Who was the doctor? Schumann! Mm, not Camden Philharmonic, huh? Not the Julia Spiccato. One mistake cannot marry another mistake and have children. Put you in your own rhythmical zoo. When you play a low note, it must be a low note, not some kind of. Yeah, yeah. Forte only. Forte only. Forte only! <laughs> Tuba! <laughs> Forte only! Oh. Cool. He's cool dude. I like him though, he's nice.